Oh shit, I'm already flipping. Restart. Check, check. Yo, yo. I'm fucking. We're gonna keep it going. Yeah, yeah. Now entering the ring for the heavyweight championship of the world, David Castle. Yes, yes, motherfuckers. What the fuck is up? It's your boy, David Castle, here with another installment of Knowledge with Homage. Let me thank you so much for tuning in today. We're going to have a real fun talk. I am your host, like I just said, David Castle, a.k.a. Homage. Let me apologize for not getting back to you guys sooner. I've been feeling a little bit under the weather. Under the weather, I mean. Uh, I got a little cold and shit, but, you know, life goes on. Feeling a lot better today, so here we are. Got a fun, exciting talk for you guys today, just like they always are. Uh, we're going to talk about artificial intelligence and transhumanism and uh, all of those exciting things now. Really crazy topics, and we're going to get deep into that shit. But um, hope you guys are all doing good out there and, you know, earning some money, taking care of your families, living happily, making good choices and all that shit. I know it's hard to do sometimes, man. There's a lot of uh, temptation out there. It's really easy to just uh, go on a four-day cocaine binge, huh? No, I'm just kidding. But um, felt a little earthquake last night here in uh, my house here in Carson City. It was weird as fuck. It just shook for like one second. And I looked at my girlfriend. I was like, do you feel that? What was that? And then uh, I went to go check and see if somebody like crashed into my house because that's what it felt like. The whole house just shook. I don't know if you guys have ever been in an earthquake. But uh, it's quite an interesting experience. So it was a little 3.0 on the uh, the Richter scale there. And no big deal, but pretty exciting. Exciting stuff. Um, went and visited Lake Tahoe the other day. Beautiful day um, until they started spraying chemtrails all over the sky to fuck it up. But nobody cares at the beach. You look around and there will be uh, 10 planes going at once, all just spraying all over the sky and uh, clearly creating the clouds that exist. And uh, you mention it to people, and they don't give a fuck. They don't want to talk about it. It's just they turn the other way. They won't acknowledge its existence. And it's just the strangest thing. Th- that will never cease to blow my mind, how people just don't care that that shit's happening. And uh, they'll even, like, deny it when they're when they're looking at it. And uh, interesting correlation. That's also when I got sick. Uh, who knows what the fuck they're spraying. I don't know. But, you know... Just got a little cold. No big deal, though. But let me get into what we're going to be talking about today. Like I said, I was doing some research into artificial intelligence and uh, robotics and things like that. It's it's always been something that sparked my interest. Today, I watched an interview with a, a guy named Jordy Rose, who was the founder of D-Wave Quantum Computing Company. I guess it was the first... Um, quantum computing company to go public and to make this technology available in the public domain supposedly i don't know he's like the front man for it and his story didn't really make much sense to me he goes in in the beginning of his talk he talks about how he was able to get into uh the university he was at it was something in canada he's a canadian guy and he was a wrestler who got shitty grades he didn't even get good sat scores or anything but somehow he was able to get into this prestigious university and now he is you know, the spokesman for this, uh, quantum computing, quantum computing, um, you know, supercomputers and artificial intelligence. So he's the guy who's really trying to promote it to the public and make it seem like it's a good thing, which I do not agree with at all because I know how the world really works. And I think, I'm pretty sure this guy does too. He's just the front man. He's the public relations dude who's supposed to sell it to the public and act like it's going to be a good thing. But the artificial intelligence thing and um, the rise of robotics totally aligns with the depopulation agenda and basically just replacing the human worker you know the people the human slaves with robot slaves because you know according to the elite we're just a bunch of useless eaters we're just taking up space and ruining the planet if you believe in the whole climate change thing then uh, you'd believe that we're the people who are responsible for murdering the planet, and we got to just basically kill ourselves. We can't have babies. Um, We can't eat meat. 
what else can't we do? I don't know. We can't drive cars. Um, unless you're rich. Unless you're rich and powerful and you're a politician, then you can do all that stuff and it's no big deal as long as you're telling everybody else what to do. <laughs> Funny how the world works like that, right? So very strange. Anyways, yeah, talking, listening to Jordy Rose um, try to sell the whole artificial intelligence thing. Uh, a very interesting talk, you know. He 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 goes into some issues that most people aren't talking about. I mean, nobody has seen this video. As important as it is, it hasn't really been viewed by many people at all. I think it's got like 2,000 views, which I was thinking about myself. I was like, man, it's such an important topic, and it's literally going to affect the lives of everybody on the whole entire planet, and nobody cares. The, the People just do not care. Um, it's in the news sometimes. They'll They'll mention it here and there. But nobody's doing like the research into it unless you're in the field, unless you're a scientist who's involved in it. And uh, it's just crazy, you know, how you can have this stupid, dumb fucking video with, uh, you just name uh, countless videos on the internet that are just retarded that have billions of views or hundreds of millions, you know, just the most idiotic things get blown up on the internet where, whereas, you know, these talks that actually matter and they will actually affect the lives of you your family, your friends, and everybody you know, uh, just don't get viewed. Nobody cares. Nobody wants to think about it. And that's kind of the way we've been trained to be. We're in a perpetual state of adolescence, and we just avoid the things that matter, and we're always seeking pleasure and happiness because that's the easy thing to do. It's hard to take responsibility for your life and the world around you and, and try to think about and contemplate the issues that really have an effect on you. Most people don't want to do it. And um, the YouTube views are reflective of that, <laughs> unfortunately, because, uh, excuse me, I got a runny nose, I'm all fucked up over here, but yeah, people just don't care, you know, it's not a topic that intrigues them, or they just haven't been trained to care about it, they want to talk about, I don't know, just every other political issue that gets shoved down our throats that really doesn't matter, that won't affect our day-to-day -day lives, but, you know, things like, I don't know, I'm not going to say these things don't necessarily matter, but there's so many things that are getting promoted in the in the media that won't have as large of an effect as artificial intelligence and robotics and computers will. Like things like racism and things like that. I mean, it's just everything's racist, you know, like everyone's always freaking out about race or you said this or you said that and homophobia and the transgender thing and all this shit that's like, Okay, I get it. Like you shouldn't you should just be a good person and not give a fuck what color somebody's skin is or who, what they're doing in their bedroom or you know, whose dick they're sucking or what they're putting their dick in or whatever. As long as it's not hurting someone or, you know, <laughs> like emotionally damaging someone as long as they're not like a pedophile, which they're cool with that though. You know, there's a whole agenda to like promote pedophilia, which I'll get into later because it totally aligns with this, but there's all of these things that um are exploited in the media and just like presented to the people as if they're very important issues. Whereas these things like artificial intelligence, which is going to affect the whole economy of the whole entire world. And like I said, the day-to-day -day lives of everyone is just not spoken about and presented as a non-issue. Just let the scientists handle it. They're so much smarter than you. You're too stupid to understand the technology. So don't even worry about it. Just uh, listen to Elon Musk. You know, these people who are like uh, the technocrats is what they are. And that's the society we're heading into. It's called a technocracy, which is basically a government controlled by scientists. It's a scientific dictatorship where scientists get to decide what you can and can't do, um, how much money you make, how much energy you consume, um, which includes, you know, heating your home, um, what type of food you're able to eat, uh, driving your car, things like that. Every aspect of your life, basically, is going to be governed by a scientist. And <laughs> I don't know how you guys feel about that, but, man, fuck these guys. Let me control my own life. I don't give a fuck if you're a scientist. You know, it's just, I'm a scientist, in fact. I went to school for science. I got my associates of geoscience, bitch, so let me control your life. <laughs> it's just ridiculous, man, and this is happening right before our eyes and nobody cares, but... Let me get back into um, the artificial intelligence thing. So basically what it is is a movement towards 
like I said, replacing the human worker with robots. And the way it's presented to us by these people who are the public relations people is that we're just not going to have to work anymore. We're not going to have to go get in the sh- the ditch with a shovel and uh, do the hard, brute labor. That can just all be done by robots. And we're going to have all of this free time to just pursue our creative interests and just hang out with our families and fuck our robotic sex dolls and do all that shit. And, uh, but that's not going to be how it is. I mean, come on. Of course not. It's They're making it seem like the robots are going to do all of the hard work and we're just going to, you know, have all of this free time and life will be so much better for us. Like our standard of living will be raised by the introduction of robots or robots into the workplace, which is already happening on a massive scale. But it's really not going to happen like that. It's going to be a whole restructuring of society. If you're unfamiliar with the movement, it's something called transhumanism. And transhumanism is basically morphing um, technology with humans. It's inserting robotic parts into humans, um, whether it's nano through nanobots or developing a cyborg and then transferring all of your memories into that robot. That's kind of what transhumanism is. It's just morphing the line between... It's just morphing humans and machines. It's it's incorporating machine parts into human beings. And uh, there's a big guy who was part of that. He was the head of Google for a while. His name is Ray Kurzweil. He wrote a book called The Age of Spiritual Machines. He's a huge proponent of transhumanism. And one of the things they promote behind it is that you'll never die. with with um, As long as you download your consciousness into a cyborg, then basically they'll make it look like you. It'll look exactly like you. And it won't even cost that much money to create a robot that looks exactly like you. And then you can say a few words, probably a sizable list of words, and then they can speak exactly like you and ask you some sort of questionnaire where they can respond just like you. And basically it'll be you in every way, except it's not going to be your soul. So basically you won't ever die, but you will die. And there will be people who will be tricked into doing this and trans, you know, being euthanized. They'll they'll be killed, but they'll be convinced that they're going to live forever in this robot because we've been, you know, there's people who actually believe that that your brain is the only thing that's making you alive, and that if you are just somehow able to transfer everything that's in your brain into a robot, then you're never going to die. But that's not going to be what's going to happen. It's going to be something totally different. It's still going to be a robot. It might talk like you and look like you, but it's not actually going to be you. It's it's not going to be you. You're still going to be dead, you know? <laughs> so um, there's a lot of people who are paying a lot of money to to make this happen and become part of this transhumanist movement. And that's something that the elite is very big on. You know, there's a lot of proponent, proponents towards that type of thing, which... It's just crazy. It's a crazy world we live in that that is even possible. That's something that's even on the table. But it's something that's been talked about for a long time. It's been seen in a lot of movies. Um, Things like being cryogenically frozen and then awoken in the future once they have the technology to, I don't know, bring you back to life. I think Walt Disney was cryogenically frozen and is waiting to be brought back. So people really do believe in this. And this is, you know, there's real technology out there that says... The, the science says that it's going to be able to happen, so it's going down, man. Artificial intelligence, supercomputers, the robots taking over. It's uh, crazy times we live in. Definitely crazy times we live in. Um, all this artificial intelligence research is done mostly in universities or at places like Google or Facebook, these very, very big companies, and it's done with government grants or through private grants through uh, foundations and things like that or through the big companies like Google and Facebook who just have a shitload of money that can be pouring money into this type of research because it's going to pay back. You know, it's it's part of the agenda. They, they have to do it. And the thing about doing it through universities and through grants is there's no congressional oversight. It does, You don't have to tell the government what you're doing if you're a university. They just give you the money and, you know, you do what you want, and you don't got to tell the people about it because you're a private university. You are using the taxpayer money, but the taxpayers have no say in what you do. So it's it's a pretty clever system, and uh, it works out very well. But it's interesting to think about what 
these government um, institutions like DARPA, the Defense Ad- the Defense Advanced Research Project Association, which is a brand of the, branch of the Pentagon. It's the research branch of the Pentagon. It's interesting to think about what they have developed. You know, like what kind of robots do they have? I, mean, I think about that shit because anything that gets released into the public domain, whether it was the computer, um, the cell phone, like smartphone technology or the internet, all of these things were all military inventions before they were released to the public. Now, we may be presented with people like, uh, I don't know who, like Steve Jobs or uh, Mark Zuckerberg or people like this, but the people, they're like the front men, you know? It, this technology was actually developed behind closed doors for a military purpose, and the only time that it gets released to the public is when it can serve that military purpose. They already know how the public is going to react to certain technology. So anytime some big, like, world-changing technology gets released, you know, fucking, I'd say 99 times out of 100, it was developed by places like DARPA, you know, the Defense Advanced Research Project Association. Because it's a national security issue, and they got it all planned out. They know what the fuck they want to do and how people are going to react to the internet or having a computer, and what happened when people all got computers. It's it was used to collect data on everyone. They know everything you're talking about. They can create these profiles of everyone and use these supercomputers to basically predict how you're going to react to certain situations. So they know what they can do and when they can do it. And they know what they can't do as well because they have everyone's information. They have all your data. There's no more privacy anymore because we have voluntarily given it up through these computers, through using even your debit card, because every purchase is tracked. And it's it's all computerized. It's all digital now. So they know exactly what you buy when you go to the store. They know what type of movies you watch. They know fucking, you know, what you talk about on social media, what posts you like and all that stuff. And they can create these personality profiles where they know basically everything about you. And I'm sure they have certain people, probably like myself, who are on the list of people who are possible, I don't fucking know, terrorists or something, just people that I got to keep an eye on. And that's ultimately what it's for, because everybody is a suspect in the days after 9-11. Um, it was used to justify the massive surveillance program, which we now live under, where there's cameras everywhere. Um, in London, they're now doing that facial recognition technology, which is just on the streets. They got cameras looking at everyone, and if you look like a terrorist or somebody who's on their list then i don't know they'll just come fucking a cop will come out of the bushes and tackle you or something i don't know what happens but they're looking at everyone now everyone's a suspect and you really feel it when you go to the airport and go to places like that like you really get treated like you're a fucking piece of shit and just a surf to the government you know you're just this little peasant and they can do whatever they want to you because everyone's a terrorist and it's for your own good And, of course, I'm oversimplifying it, but that's certainly the way it seems, you know. So, yeah, it's it's crazy to think about what they have developed behind closed doors. Like, they got all these underground bases and shit. What are they doing down there? What are they making? I don't know. Are they making super robots? And uh, why is Will Smith always there? Like, you know, I was thinking about that because in this talk with uh, Jordy Rose he showed a clip of Will Smith talking to this robot named Sally. And Sally's like this famous robot who has been in the news and stuff. And she's the Android type robot where she looks like a human, but she has like a human face. It it looks fucking weird. And she's a girl and she's, I don't know. She looks weird, but the, the back of her skull is like all robot shit. She kind of looks like the Terminator with like a, like a silicone fucking sex doll face or some shit. And, uh, there's this, this clip with Will Smith like sitting down and having a date with her and it's funny to think because you know Will Smith was an iRobot and uh you know he's the main character in iRobot and what was the premise of that story the robots are taking over and they're gonna fuck everyone up but he was also in um Men in Black too where they had I remember one of the alien type people that was actually a robot I think it was the little it was the little robot he had like a little surrogate type thing where um it was just like a robot and he was inside controlling it and stuff and it's just interesting that will smith is there fucking talking about this shit i don't know is will smith in on it is he a robot i don't know (laughs) 
But it's it's crazy to think about though, to think like how realistic these robots are that they're coming out with now, that they're showing the public that are in the news and stuff, like fuck, what if they do have some secret robot motherfuckers that are like actually public figures or something? What if some of these famous people are robots? I don't know. It's crazy to think about. I'm not saying they are or they aren't, but I'm saying they probably could be, maybe. I don't know. I'm just uh, I'm getting into speculation here, but I don't see why not. It's just strange. But um, it's clear that the goal behind artificial intelligence is to automate all the jobs that they can so they can decrease the population because that's the ultimate goal. You can go back to the famous eugenicists of the late 1800s, early 1900s, and they're the ones who really designed the society that we live under, this technocracy and this scientific dictatorship. That's the ultimate goal is to have scientists run the whole world, like I said earlier. And um, automating a large sector of the workforce is an incredibly good way of making that shit happen. Not good for us, but good for them and good for the system. And we're slowly being, like, it's gradually being introduced to us. And one thing that you might have noticed, I'm sure you've noticed, is the self-checkout that they have in all the grocery stores now. I remember going to the store as a kid with my dad and there, you know, all the checkout counters were full of actual people who would help you buy your groceries. And it was cool because they tell you what was on sale and, you know, you'd have a human interaction and you knew the person who you bought your groceries from. And it was kind of cool seeing them every day and, you know, seeing a nice, friendly, smiling face. And uh, they even bagged your groceries for you and, and did all that. And it was nice. And that seems like so long ago because the stores aren't like that anymore. Not your normal store. Like, I, there's some stores that still do it, but a majority of them are going to this self checkout thing where there's no human interaction. Um, you're just buying from a robot, and you go and you scan all your items, you do it all yourself. Who knows if you're getting overcharged for something? And then, like, the only time someone will help you is when you got to buy alcohol. They're a little red flag gets raised and um, someone has to come check your ID or something, at least if you're a kid. Well, it'll be like that too if you're an adult but or an older person. But it's just strange, you know, and people accept it. There's no public outcry saying get rid of uh, these self-checkouts. Like, we just go along with it and people see it as being convenient. They see it as being beneficial to them. They don't care that people have lost their jobs and that there's no human communication, then the personal aspect of the business has disappeared. But then again, some people want that. They don't want to communicate with someone. Even if something as like insignificant as a uh, as an interaction with a grocery clerk or with a cashier. They they'd rather just stick to themselves, go get their items, scan it to themselves, bag it themselves, and then go home. But These things, these are the little gradual things that are happening to make society accept the increased level of automation that we're we're seeing now and that we're going to continue to see. Uh, What are they doing now? They're doing the um, automated cars, people like uh, Elon Musk with his Teslas and stuff, which they're building out here uh, near where I live, out past Reno. They're building all these cars. And the story of Elon Musk is, is very interesting. I remember doing some research on him and trying to understand where he came from because he he became a public figure just out of the blue. It seemed like, you know, and it's just like, who the fuck is this guy? He just has this super successful company, or at least it seems successful. It's like the cutting edge. But in reality, it's not successful. I think um, with their, I don't know how long they've been in business, but I remember seeing the actual statistics of how much money they make. And they've only turned a profit in one quarter out of like the... 20 years they've been in existence so how could you run a business like that if you don't make any money you know (laughs) like why are people still giving this guy money if it he there's no profit i don't understand it's just strange you know but that's the thing it's because there's a whole agenda behind this company it's like he's the front man for the electric cars and the automation and uh what are they doing now too they're shooting all these satellites up into the sky that will be part of 5g and the internet of things and if you haven't done any research into that i would highly recommend that you do because this is going to be a real game changer basically what it is and 
you know, I don't understand it fully. There's a lot more people who you can find who have better information on it than me, but the Internet of Things will be where everything is integrated into one system. Everything from your cell phone, your computer, your smart TV, to your fucking blender, your dishwasher, your car, the street lights, like everything is going to be in one system. And, you know, as if that's not creepy enough, because yeah, they're going to have surveillance, they're going to know everything you fucking do, every little thing. And they can even do shit with like smart dust now, which are these little nano computers that they spray out into the sky. That's also part of the chemtrail spraying. Um, smart dust, they're like these basic, they're these little uh, nano sensors. Incredibly small on the fucking micro scale, like uh, nano scale, I mean, which I'm not sure which is bigger, nano or micro. I think nano smaller. It's really fucking small, like like fractions and fractions of a human hair. Just incredibly tiny. You couldn't even see it with the naked eye. But they can make computers that small now and little sensors. So if you stepped in the forest on this smart dust, they would know that somebody's walking there. And they have a goal to cover the whole world in this smart dust. And that's part of the 5G Internet of Things. And it sounds like science fiction, and it's obviously a gigantic project, but that's part of why they can't speak about you know, they can't acknowledge that the spraying is happening. In order for them to, like, carry this out and for it to be successful, they have to spray the atmosphere with a fucking shitload of this stuff. And it's just unbelievable, you know? And that's why it's not going to stop. And it doesn't matter how much people protest, which people aren't really protesting. You know, sometimes people do. But it's an incredibly small fraction of society. Most people don't care. They don't believe it. They just brush it off as conspiracy theory. But... All of this is working towards one agenda. And that's what I want people to understand is, you know, it's it's all part of this one thing and it's fucking crazy, man. It's, it's really interesting to think about and I don't understand how people don't want to like research it or think about it. They sh- A lot of people shut down when you try to talk about this thing with them. They basically don't have, I don't know, they don't, how do I describe this? It's like they don't want to take responsibility for their lives and they want people to make decisions for them. Because that's the way that we've been trained. You know, like we've always been trained for people to do our thinking for us and to be told what to think and not to critically analyze and think for ourselves. Um, That's what they trained us to do in school. And then once you get out of school, that's what TV trains you to do. And obviously you're watching TV the whole time you're going to school anyways. So it's kind of like beating that analytical part of your brain into submission to authority. And that's what it does, man. They think that um, if it was a bad thing, that the news and the government and, and the schools and the universities would be doing something about it. But in reality, you know, sometimes they do. Sometimes they will, um, you know, create public outcry. I think oh, I just saw an article saying that one of the states in the United States, maybe it was Alabama or something, is... Um, you know, raising serious concerns about the health risks associated with 5G. Because 5G is not just a step up from 4G, which is what all of our smartphones are operating on now. It is, it's a completely different wavelength, and it's something very similar to the wavelength of the human body because everything operates on a frequency. All life forms operate on a certain frequency, which is the way you're able to manipulate uh, brains with electromagnetic frequencies because everything is an electromagnetic frequency. We're all vibrating. Uh, Nikola Tesla said, if you want to understand the universe, think in terms of frequencies and vibrations. Because we're all electrical beings at the end of the day. And if you have this 5G saturated world, it's going to be fucking with you. And it's fucking with all your cells and it's disrupting all of your cellular processes that make the human being exist, that make all life exist. So to just completely saturate the world in this wavelength, it's something that's never happened before, and we don't know what's going to happen. Like, shouldn't we be doing research on this and making sure that it's safe? I mean, like, and all the rich motherfuckers got to live in this shit too, don't they? Or are they just not going to put 5G in their house? I don't know. Maybe they got the antidote or something for it. Maybe they got a little fucking Iron Man suits or some shit that they put on where it doesn't affect them. But it definitely is something that should raise a red flag with people um, because... You know, like cell phone towers have been associated with giving people cancer. Uh, Microwaves give people cancer. You know, you can't 
fucking stick your head in the microwave, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to get fried. And that's how tumors and shit are created. Um, but the correlations exist between, you know, health effects and electromagnetic frequencies. And it's something that definitely should be looked at. It's something that we need to do something about. And uh, some people are taking steps to do it, but I think for the most part, it's being kept away from the public eye and not really being spoken about, which is fucked up. But then again, like I said, there's a whole agenda behind it, so it's not going to be presented as a bad thing. It's it's always presented as good, you know? Oh, you're, you're going to be able to download your movies so much faster. You're going to be able to FaceTime faster, as if it needs to be any faster. Like, it works pretty fucking good the way it is. But... Man, we're just living in the future. It's 2019, and it's amazing what we can do with our technology and where it's going and how. where is it going to be in five years from now. It's it's amazing to think about. Or 20 years from now. What's it going to be like in 2050? Uh, I, I've heard that it's going to be normal for people to be like married to robots. It'll be very normal for people to have robot lovers as soon as 2025. It's it's something that's really big over in Asia. They got these like little Asian fuck dolls <laughs> that are man. It's not even funny though. It's just weird. And a lot of people are down with it though, because I just because the guy was mentioning it, uh, Jordy Rose, on this this uh, talk that he was giving, and he was saying, yeah, well, uh, basically the humanoid robots that they're making now are, are they're just sex dolls. But uh, we've taken some of those scientists who build those sex dolls, and we've got them to make uh you know just it's not for that they're they're going to be friends with us and they're going to hang out with old people because old people are lonely so we're going to get them these robots to like take care of them and i think that was one of the premises in uh i robot right he will smith's grandma had like a robot that was doing the dishes for him and shit or for her and uh will smith was like what the fuck this is weird you know he didn't like the robots in that movie but like there's people really want to do this and those movies like that i robot and the terminator and just countless movies star trek uh star wars all this shit it's used as predictive programming it's used to condition the masses to accept it because it's already in you subconsciously so when you see it in real life you accept it because something in your mind already knows that you've already seen it so it's like not something brand new to you and even though you can't quite like correlate it with that exact movie that you saw at that moment, subconsciously, you already know because everything, you take in so many different bits of information, it's all stored in your brain. And that's the reason that conditioning and predictive programming work so well because your brain remembers so much. And just because you can't recall it consciously doesn't mean that you don't remember it on some level. So when you're presented with these robots and these Asian fuck dolls, that are like, you know, two feet tall and they look like little kids, like you accept it and you're like, oh shit, you know, fucking I'd fuck that thing or whatever. I don't know. It's, it's just weird, dude. And that's the way they do it. And they know what the fuck they're doing. But it's always presented as being harmless or, um, for example, one of the things I say with like the little sex dolls that look like little kids is that it would help with pedophilia or which they're trying to normalize as well. Like, there's people who straight and come out and say, like, hey, I'm attracted to little kids, and you shouldn't treat me differently because of that. You know, like, all these things that were so taboo in society, at least in Western society. I know in the Middle East, they're still marrying little girls and stuff, and that's always been a part of their culture, which is fucked. But, like, here, it's been taboo for a long time. Like, you don't have sex with little kids. They're little kids, you know? They're innocent little kids. Don't rape them. Just like you shouldn't rape anyone, but especially a kid. I mean, Jesus Christ. But society has changed so much. It's like they're trying to lump in pedophilia with like the gay, bi, trans community and like add that shit to it as well. Because, you know, I don't know how much you guys believe this shit, but there's a lot of evidence linking the whole elite and like politicians and these celebrities and shit with pedophilia and like this satanic fucking sex magic and all kinds of weird shit like that Aleister Crowley was doing dude like so many kids go missing and sex trafficking is like a real thing so they're trying to normalize this shit and make it so they can get away with anything and man fuck all that shit dude like you can miss me with that I'm not about that man that's fucked but you know this is what they want to do and that's just weird as shit 
I don't fucking get it, but maybe I'm just weird. Maybe I'm old fashioned. I don't know. <laughs> That's crazy, man. It's scary shit. Um, one of the things that Jordy Rose mentioned in his uh in his talk there, which was kind of like an aside thing, he didn't make a big deal about it. He just kind of said it as a factual thing, was that capitalism and technology are not compatible. And that was something that stood out to me because if if automation becomes the norm and all of these jobs disappear that humans once did, where does all that money go? These companies are still going to be making all the money. Oh, man. Sorry, I'm like so congested right now. I'm like fucked. But so if a company has nothing but robots doing the jobs that humans used to do, the company is still going to be making a shitload of money. They're still going to be making all of the money that they made before, probably even more. But none of that money is going to be going back into the public. It's just going to be going to the people who own the companies, right? So what is that going to do to society? The people don't have any jobs. Like, they don't have any way to make money. So capitalism doesn't work in that regard. Like, you can't just lift yourself up by the bootstraps and go fucking create a business and be successful when there's a robot who will do it cheaper, faster, and better than you. You know what I'm saying? So it just further, it's going to increase the gap so much further between the haves and the have-nots. And that's, of course, that's the goal. He tries to act like, oh, it'll be better for people and, you know, we're not going to have to work anymore. But that, I mean, it sounds good in theory, but if you ain't working and you're not contributing to society in any way, then what do the people, like, the, they don't need you. The people who own the world don't fucking need you anymore. And they don't want you here anymore. And that's the ultimate goal behind all this shit is to get rid of the useless eaters. That's really how they see us. They see us as uh, people that are like, just consuming shit and not producing anything they see us as fucking inferior or like little ants or some shit they never see us as being human and uh that's what robotics is going to be used to do so capitalism and technology are not compatible and i totally understand why it's that way like i said because if if the robots are doing all the jobs that humans did then humans aren't going to be making any money and then and then what? They're going to have to be subsidized somehow by the government, right? It's going to be have to be some sort of uh, socialism or communism. Or, like I said before, a scientific dictatorship and like a totalitarian socialist state. You know, they're kind of compatible in that way. They, they go together. So the government is going to tell you, you know, how much money you get. You're going to get like an, a little allowance and uh, you're going to be allowed to go to the store and get so much food, but you can't get any meat because meat is bad, you know, beef and chicken and stuff, the proteins that you need to grow and survive, that's all bad, you're not allowed to eat that, you're gonna have to, you know, be on like the rabbit uh, iguana diet, where you just eat kale and carrots and shit, and the the veganism shit, like, I understand it, and, you know, I, I like Dr. Sebi, I've looked into his shit, and it makes sense, and it's cool, like, it seemed like he did, cure AIDS and like herpes and all these uncurable things just with a with an alkaline vegan diet which totally makes sense but like meat has been a staple food of the human diet for a very long time and I think there's an agenda behind like the animal rights groups and and the vegan shit and all that stuff in trying to get people off of meat and what it is is it's like demoting the level that the human being occupies. They're trying to make it seem like these cows and pigs and chickens are like equal to us on every level and that, you know, even the trees and shit are equal to us and we just can't do anything. Basically, they're trying to devalue your life and tell you that you're not shit. You're not an individual. God did not create you. You have no special purpose on this earth. You are no different than the fucking blade of grass that my dog just took a shit on. And and you're no different than the dog himself or just anyone. You're just not special. And you're not allowed to eat meat. Um, you have to do whatever we say because we know what's best for you. Now, it, it might seem like I'm taking that out of context and I'm making like a big deal out of nothing. But you have to understand how all this shit goes together because it's it's all part of one agenda. Like I keep on saying, you know. 
like the whole earth worship um like climate change thing man all these people saying that humans are destroying the world and that we need to stop eating meat we need to stop driving our cars we need to stop using oil and all this shit man it all goes together dude like it, it's really interesting to be living in this time it's an amazing time we live in because all of the normal things that we used to do are just you're just not allowed to do them anymore you're not allowed to be traditional you're not you have to change and like the way we've been doing shit for thousands of years is just completely wrong and now science has it all figured out and these scientists who wear these white lab coats or whatever are like now the gods or something it's so weird man and um a thing that aligns with that like the animal rights thing which i get i fucking love animals like i, I I don't abuse animals or nothing. I love animals. I love walking out in the wilderness and seeing like a bear or something. I hit a mountain lion with my bike. I got to tell you that story one of these days, but I'll get to that later. But the thing with the animal rights thing is it's leading up to the robot rights thing because artificial intelligence is going to progress so quickly and they're going to get so much smarter than us and robots are going to be able to do so much that like we're they're going to start demanding rights. They're going to be like self-sufficient and they're going to be aware of themselves just like a person is and they're going to be like what the fuck why are we being used as slaves? Which was another concept behind the iRobot movie. Um and this guy Jordy Rose was talking about how him and his companies they are already giving them certain rights. They have like certain laws and rights that robots have. And it's just, you know, unalienable rights. It's like the Bill of Rights in the United States. And, like, that's just another thing to devalue human life. Like, you're no better than a fucking robot. And it's just, they're trying to replace us with robots. And it's just crazy, man. Like, it sounds like science fiction. And it sounds like something that's just so far ahead of us that it doesn't make sense right now, but it's happening right now. It's like every day they're progressing in this, and every day it's becoming more and more apparent. But most people don't care, and most people don't even have an opinion on it and, and don't understand it. But actually, you know what? That's probably not true, because I think most people would not be cool with this shit. And that's why it's not made into a big issue. They have to gradually introduce it to where it becomes normal, to where people will accept it, and then they can talk about it. And then it'll be like... Yeah, it's fucking, it's always been cool, you know? We've always been cool with that. But that's not the way it goes. It's just strange, man, to think, like, that people can manipulate society on this level and be that good at it, you know? Like, it's really interesting. Interesting times we live in. Certainly, uh, certainly intriguing, in my opinion. I don't know why more people aren't talking about it. I guess because it's an uncomfortable subject and people don't want to hear it. People want to talk about other shit i don't know but um yeah like i said they this guy's talking about how they want to make robots that are like your friend that hang out with old people he was saying uh well you know he's talking about the population of canada and he says that the population over 65 in canada over 65 years of age far outnumbers the number of people below the age of 16 and that's because people aren't having babies anymore at least in the western countries we've been convinced not to have babies through things like you know birth control and planned parenthood and things like that and it's a form of population reduction in third world countries like where i was at in southeast asia you see kids everywhere and that was one of the things that i noticed first was how many kids there were i was like oh shit this is sweet dude look at all these little kids and it's not like they were all unhappy and you know living in total poverty and just fucking suffering which is a big argument against having babies here is like why would I ever want to have a baby when there's so many unwanted kids and orphans and they just have no purpose of existence? And, like, that's their real argument for it. It's like, dude, you're so pathetic if you think that shit. If you really think that just because a person doesn't have, like, a silver spoon in their mouth when they're born, it doesn't mean they don't have a right to exist. It doesn't mean that they can't make anything of themselves. But this is another way that we've been brainwashed. It's just, it's crazy, man. But, um, yeah, they want to make these robots that'll hang out with old people. It's basically what he's saying is there's so many old people now that, you know, they're lonely and they just sit at home all by themselves, which is true. And it's it's fucked up what we do to our, 
our old people in our society. Like we don't in other societies in third world countries, um, in Mexico, in the Philippines, like in these more traditional countries, they take care of their old people. Like you don't send your grandpa or your mom to the hospital. They live in the house with you and you take care of them, you know, but here in the United States or in Canada or in Europe, I'm sure in many places, you just send them to the hospital to die. You might visit them a couple times, you know, a week or something if you're nice. And uh, other than that, you let the doctors worry about it, which is fucked up. And that's another way that society has been manipulated into doing things like that and not caring about the specialness of human life and what it does to watch someone die. Because if you have a dying relative in the house with you and you're a kid and you're there and you're you're seeing your grandma or your grandpa pass away, it really ingrains into you like how short our time on earth is. And it just gives you a whole different understanding of life. It makes you think like, wow, you know, we're not here for a very long time. I have to live a meaningful life. It tells you that. And it it might not be apparent to you like immediately because you're a little kid, but it like ingrains that into you subconsciously. And it makes you want to like be a better person and make the most out of life because you've seen how quickly it can end. You watch someone die and you know like that shit's fucking crazy. But if you're totally detached from it and it happens in a hospital, like one minute they're here, one minute they're not, it's like you don't have the same understanding of life and death and, and what it really means and how special life really is and how easily it can be taken away and like what a brutal process dying can be. So that's totally been taken away from us. And like, it's not like I don't like hospitals or anything, although I kind of do. I mean, fuck hospitals in a way, but they can they can really help you. And obviously hospitals are important and the advances we've made in medical technology is great. But at the same time, it has really changed the whole structure of society. And it's just something that's interesting. It's an interesting observation to see how things have changed in recent years. But um, yeah, so they want, they want robots to hang out with old people and just to be your friend or your companion. I think in the the near future, it'll be normal for people, people's best friend to be a robot and for people to just hang out with robots. Maybe little kids have other little kid robots that they hang out with instead of getting a kid a dog or something. They just get them a little robot. And we've been trained to accept this too. I mean, like our phones, everyone's always got a phone. So like, yeah, Siri always talking to you and Alexa, it's normalizing this this communication with robots. And like I said before, with the self-checkout thing, it's like the automation thing is definitely being normalized. And people, you know, in the near future, we will be much more accepting to it. And I think the generation now growing up, like my generation, you know, the millennial generation and even the people younger than us, they're going to eat that shit up, dude. Because, I don't know, they're all into some weird, like, the sex shit's getting pretty fucking weird now. I mean, I'm sure it always has been, and there's always been a part of the mind that's into, like, some weird shit, but now it's, like, there's, like, so many different sex toys you can get. There's thousands of different items and shit, and then, like, like I was saying with the the fuck robots, (laughs) or sex robots or whatever, it's just, it it takes away that, that level of companionship that you have to build in order to build like a physical bond with another person with between a man and a woman not to mention you're not going to have any kids so that goes with the depopulation agenda but on top of that you're not going to have a family you know you're not going to have that that special bond between man and woman that leads to a family and that's the most special thing in life is to have a family but instead people just want to fuck a fuck robot a little a little asian looking like six-year-old looking fucking silicon robot that's just, I don't know, man. That's weird. And they were saying in this news article uh, I read, they were saying that by 2025 that sex with robots will be totally normal. In the Western world, in Asia and like China and stuff, it's already pretty big there. Like, and they're doing some weird shit. I don't know, man. It's just crazy fucking times we live in and pedophilia is totally being normalized apparently one of these fuck robots what they said it costs like a thousand bucks so you know 
I guess that'd be cheaper than a wife in the long run, right? You got to take her out to dinner. You got to buy her shoes. You got to buy her wedding ring. You got to have a wedding. You got to do all that shit. That adds up quick. For a one-time investment of $1,000, you can get yourself a little fuck robot. I mean, it's a, it's a win-win. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Um, but it's funny because I was watching the, the interview on YouTube where this guy's talking about this because basically what he was saying, like, Obviously, there's always been like sex dolls and and sex well, sex robots are relatively new, but he was making a point that this one looked especially young, like it looked like she was like five years old or something, and she apparently was only like two feet tall. And I'm not gonna get into the specifics of where you can put your whatever and and shit like or what it does, but you could imagine, you know. And um, I was looking through the comments, you know, the YouTube comments to see what people had to say about it. And, like, a vast majority of everyone was like, what's the problem, man? Like, that shit's cool, dude. You know? <laughs> and, uh, fuck, I guess that's how people feel nowadays. Like, they're all about it. You know? They don't want to deal with other people or or the problems and the difficulties that come with having a relationship. Although it's much more rewarding and there's nothing better than having someone you love and having a family, like I said. Um, they, people don't want to deal with that shit. They want to take the easy way out which is 99% of people want to live life in the easiest possible way and uh, just want to fuck some fuck robots. Can you blame them? I don't know. But I thought that was funny looking through the comments and being like, dang, dude, like people are all about this shit. I feel like everyone, you just introduced this product. You gave them like free publicity and everyone like went and bought it (laughs) after that. But it was funny because, like, the the thing came in, like, she's dressed in, like, all black. It looks like a, like, funeral attire, and she looks all sad and shit, and she comes in, like, a little coffin. And it's like, holy shit, dude. It's fucking crazy. But such are the times that we live in, and uh, I don't know. Maybe don't knock it till you try it, huh? I don't fucking know, dude. Weird, weird shit. Pedophilia totally being normalized, but whatever, so... But as I was saying before, um, he also mentioned that we'll soon be able to buy robots that look exactly like you. They'll be able to custom make a robot that has the same physical appearance as you. It has all your your same facial expressions um, and body type and all of that. And then you'll be able to download your memories. I'm sure there'll be some sort of questionnaire or something that will ha- make it have like the same personality as you. And basically they're going to replace you imagine imagine this take this scenario for example you're the father of a family you know you got your wife and kids and shit and then the guy the father of the family dies and the kids are like four or five and it would be totally traumatic for them to know that their father just died well the mom takes it upon herself she sees a little ad in the fucking on her cell phone or whatever that says you can like recreate, you know, did you recently lose a loved one? You can recreate them. They'll be exactly as before. And uh, they'll just go do that. And there's all kinds of science fiction stories about that. So the woman just goes to the store, you know, brings some pictures of him or whatever, maybe some of his DNA or whatever the fuck, and uh, a couple home recordings so they can get his voice and his personality and whatnot. And then, uh, boom, later that day, bring home fucking new dad, better dad, more stamina in the bed, dad. Robot dad. (laughs) Like, damn, bro. We live in a crazy fucking time, man. We're going to be seeing this shit in our lifetime, too. They already have it where you can do that with your dog. And it's not not like a robot dog, though. It's just a straight clone of your dog. Uh, In fact, I read that in in a magazine on my way back from Asia. It was on, like, Hong Kong Airlines. And it just said... Basically saying, like, if if your dog dies, there's this company in China that will um, clone your dog, like, and make it exactly how it was. And there was a movie about that, too, with Arnold Schwarzenegger. What was that movie? That was, uh, fuck, I forget that one. Yeah, anyways, Arnold Schwarzenegger was in a movie like that where they had all these, um, duplicate people that were, like, they're surrogates, basically, is what they are. And they look just like you, talk just like you, except they're robots, and uh, they're going to fuck your life up. I think Ray Bradbury wrote a bunch of stories about that, too. So it's definitely something that's been in the public consciousness for a while. The only difference is it's now happening, and we are living in these times. So 
I don't know, man. Not to worry, though. I mean, don't let it fuck up your day and, you know, be scared about it or whatever. But be be aware of it, right? Shouldn't we think about it? And, like, I hope there's people that are mature enough to look at this objectively and and weigh out the pros and cons for society of artificial intelligence and supercomputers and things like that because just the technology that exists right now is is flabbergasting it's it's something that is it's just crazy man we live in a crazy fucking time so i think it's interesting it's an interesting field of research i think it's something interesting to look into and not many people are talking about it so that's why i wanted to give my talk about it and i realize i'm not you know obviously i'm not a scientist well i am a scientist i'm like a little scientist i'm like a very very stupid scientist <laughs> And I'm not a roboticist or whatever, but I think me as a human being living in these times and seeing as how all this shit will affect me, I have a right to talk about this shit and give my opinion. Just because uh, I'm not a fucking CEO at Google or some shit doesn't mean I can't think about this shit. And But, like, I think that's kind of what a lot of people think about, though, about this kind of stuff is that since they're not super well trained in the subject, they have no right to talk about it. Or that's even what these type of people will try to tell regular people is like, oh, you just wouldn't understand. It's over your head. A lot of people have that mentality is, you know, that you don't even have the right to think about certain issues because you haven't gone to this school. You're not part of this group or foundation or whatever. But that's not true. You have the right to think about whatever the fuck you want to think about. And everybody deserves their opinion. You're an individual. You're an individual. Your life matters. Your opinion matters. And don't let anybody ever take that away from you. Don't let anybody ever tell you what you can or cannot think about. Because people will try to do that. And they'll try to rob you of your integrity and your individuality and make it seem like you're beneath them or that other people are above you or something. But just because somebody has a high-paying job or fucking dresses in a certain way or has this many followers or any of that, like, dude, fuck all that shit. None of that even matters. You're your own person. Be proud of that and be yourself and don't be afraid to tell people your opinion and to speak up and and talk about what you believe in because that's what we're here on this planet to do, you know? You, you're here for a reason and uh, be proud of it, man. Don't be afraid to fucking speak up and talk about shit because it, I think it's needed now more than ever. We're at a very critical point in the world where, you know, our, your input is needed more than ever and... I don't know, some people, it depends, I don't know, you don't got to think exactly like me, but just think for yourself, like, don't be parroting what everybody tells you, like, think and analyze for yourself, and please develop that skill, because that's one of the things that's really been beaten out of us, is that ability to think and interpret for ourselves, and express ourselves adequately, and, and talk about it, you know, so I hope you guys are, aren't afraid to do that, and uh, I'm sure you're not, because I know all the real motherfuckers are listening to this shit. So thank you so much for listening. We're coming to the end here. I'm going to send you off with a cool song. And uh, that's it. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back with another podcast soon. Hope you all have a great day, a great weekend, and a great life. Make some good decisions. Don't be afraid to speak up and talk about shit, man. You know, talk about this stuff. It's interesting. And uh, if you don't know anybody who's willing to talk about it, I'm I'm sure you'll find someone on the internet or something. You know, there's there's definitely groups who are willing to discuss this kind of stuff and uh it's intellectually stimulating. It's good shit. So, thank you so much for listening. Have a good one. Peace out. Proud to be poor. Proud to be white. Proud to be who? Poor people. Poor people. Poor people. Poor people. Proud to be poor. Proud to be white. Y'all don't want this rugged man, take no shit. Know this, you fake. I just go where the dough is. We do this for the poor people. Cats that are homeless. My whole clique roll thick, bro. It's strictly pro kids. Hopeless. Y'all can't even see what the truth is. We ain't give two shits. Ruthless, rugged, new shit. You ain't think that I can fuck you, bitch. You ain't think you roll with us, you be sucking dicks. Lack politeness, like this. Don't act like the typical stereotypes of what's whiteness. Being grimy, greasy, that's what being white is. I got a bitch with a flat ass, and I like it. I like yeah. Big
big breasts and I like to lick vaginas And fucking bitches on dumpsters in the back of diners Everything we do is white trash and you raise the blades to the wrist Cause we hate life with a passion Proud to be poor Like being broke, I like being dirty, crusty, proud to be poor, I like being fat and ugly, I like not succeeding, I like beefing, I like bleeding, I like starting fights for no reason, bad temper, no patience, shit on your floor, stick your face in it, make you lick the raisins, everybody on this hip hop dick, make me sick seeing chicks like Mariah doing hip hop shit, I don't care if they think I'm sexist, I don't care if I talk about the same shit on every record, and with this gimmicky pop rapping, the way that Pete Diddy and Will Smith be getting jiggy, I I did not take showers and smell shitty Born to be poor, we born poor, we die poor I rhyme for the low down scummy I rhyme for the true hood rats It ain't a shame to look on me Understand that, where your man at? We blow your head backwards, we lend a plan at We rugged man at, you better watch out Don't talk that, you fake that Fakeness, take that, with your platinum plaque Proud to be poor Job if you ain't got no dough. I'm broke as fuck. I'm broke as fuck. I'm broke as fuck. I'm broke as fuck. If you a piece of shit and you proud and your whole squad ain't worth shit and you ain't got shit. I'm broke as fuck. I'm broke as fuck. I'm broke as fuck. I'm broke as fuck. Try to be poor.